I should have thought this through. So we've all, unfortunately, awoken into some sort of dystopian world, and I don't blame anyone right now for just wanting a distraction, a bit of escapism to help get through these rough times. And what better escapism than a fantasy book? Maybe you've been stockpiling books for just such an occasion, and feeling the towering guilt of having so many unread books. Uh. Or maybe this whole isolation thing is what's given you the time to pick up a book. Well, I'm here to give you 10 fantasy books to escape to while in self-isolation. The wheel of time turns, and ages come and pass, leaving memories that become legend. Legend fades to myth, and even myth is long forgotten when the age that gave it birth comes again. Let's start with the series that I have been spending the most amount of my time reading lately, The Wheel of Time. If you're looking for that one gigantic series to keep you entertained while in isolation, this would be my recommendation. So I've been making my way through these books for the very first time, I'll be moving on to book 5 soon, so while I haven't finished the series, I do feel like I've come far enough that I can recommend it. And with everything that's been going on, these have been my go-to books in self-isolation, I've been reading through them a lot faster, and I gotta say that this is my type of fantasy. I feel like it hits a good balance between classic and modern fantasy. Yes, there are some pacing issues, there's a few frustrations here and there, but none of that really compares to the sheer enjoyment I've had reading these books. You know, with all the chaos going on and basically everyone in isolation, I really wish I could just open a door to Narnia and hop on through. I will guarantee there's no pandemics in the land of Narnia. Narnia, wow! <coughs> Go back to the land of Spare Oom! <coughs> Stay six feet apart! Yeah, I spoke too soon. But fantasy is not all about escapism. Often you'll re-encounter in the fantasy world the problems you thought you left behind in the real world. An apparent escape becomes a way of encountering yourself and dealing with your problems. And I'd say that that's the core of what reading really is. So with that in mind, The Chronicles of Narnia becomes a simple but accurate example of what fantasy is. Each child that goes to Narnia brings their worries and issues with them, and Narnia becomes the place where they work them out. Now, Narnia is one of the most well-known fantasy realms of literature. It's a classic for a reason. The sense of wonder it achieves with such apparent effortlessness is still something that's hard to match. And overall, it's a light-hearted and fun adventure that's perfect to read in a time like this. Even after rereading these, I still feel like they hold up very well, but too often I see people only read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and none of the others, which is a shame, because I would say my favorites are The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, A Horse and His Boy, and The Silver Chair, but I do think that they're all worth a read. Maybe you've been feeling lonely, or a little down in life, then I'd recommend reading the Farseer Trilogy by Robin Hobb, because I'm sure that Fitz Chivalry has got things going worse than you. Sad boy Fitz knows all about loneliness. Seriously, Hobb puts poor Fitz through so much crap, and one way to feel better about your life is to read the story of somebody with even worse problems than you and seeing how they work through those. Book 1, Assassin's Apprentice, follows the lonely childhood of Fitz, the royal bastard of Prince Chivalry Farseer. Fitz is handed over to be raised by the stable master of Buck Keep, and it's here that he realizes he's been born with an ability known as the Wit, which allows him to mind meld with animals in order to communicate with them. A skill that is shunned by the nobility as an abomination, which means he's even more of an outcast. The kingdom is under threat from mysterious raiders who leave their victims devoid of any human emotion. And so the king decides to train Fitz as an assassin to bind the boy's loyalty to the crown of the six duchies. There's a lot of touching moments in these books, and you're constantly wanting Fitz's life to become happier. Now, I would say going into this, I wouldn't expect an assassin story like the Night Angel trilogy by Brent Weeks, 
This is not that type of story. This is Fitz telling his story with all the ups and downs, with all the tragedies and the loneliness, and it's well worth your time. If you're subscribed to the channel, <clears throat> then you know I'm a pretty big Brandon Sanderson fan, and you should have expected I'd put one of his series on this list. You might want to suit up in protective gear for the next one because Mistborn takes place in a world where mysterious mist comes out at night and ash is constantly raining down from the sky. You don't want to get that stuff on your books. In these books, there's a man known as the Lord Ruler who's ruled over the world of Scadriel for over a thousand years and has created a deep divide between the Ska, which are basically slaves, and the nobility. Why would I recommend such a gloomy sounding book during this time, you may ask? Well, it's not all ash and ruin, though those do play a big part, but hope is a major theme in this series. And it's hope that becomes the driving force that inspires a group of rebels to lead a revolution and possibly save the world at the same time. Sanderson's brilliant magic system known as Allomancy is the most striking quality of these books. Now, Allomancy is based around ingesting metals that give Allomancers special abilities. Each metal grants a different ability, but most Allomancers can only burn one metal. The ones that can utilize all of them are known as Mistborn, and a young girl named Vin, who's grown up on the streets of Luthadel, finds out that she's one of these Mistborn, and she gets caught up in this revolution. Since we're all stuck indoors, in self-isolation, why not recommend a book that mostly takes place indoors? I don't know why. The Gormenghast books primarily take place in the sprawling castle known as Gormenghast. A gigantic castle the size of an entire city. In fact, it's so large and ancient that it's gradually crumbling under the enormous weight of its own monstrous architecture. The interior is a labyrinth of cryptic rooms and dark hallways, a network so intricate that a person could easily go missing and undiscovered for years. Isolated from the outside world, the castle stands as a monument to the dozens of generations it's been ruled over by the noble family of Groan. The books follow the growth of Titus Groan, who's heir to the castle and tires of the pointless traditions that he's meant to uphold. But in the first book, Titus is just a baby, so instead you follow the bizarre inhabitants of Gormenghast. Chiefly, we follow sort of an antagonist, anti-hero of the series named Steerpike, who works his way up from being a kitchen boy under the watch of the slug-like Chef Swelter. I don't think I've ever read anything so bizarre and strange. It's been a big inspiration for my own writing, and I probably wouldn't have heard about it if I hadn't seen C.S. Lewis basically praising it as a masterpiece, so I'm glad that I gave it a chance. Now, it amazes me how the first book was published eight years before The Fellowship of the Ring. And somehow these books just never got the attention they deserve. I would say that they are a must read, but a lot of people just don't know about them. Now, unfortunately, Mervyn Peak passed away before finishing the fourth novel, Titus Awakes, but it was later completed by his widow, Maeve Gilmore. But these books can be enjoyed just as a trilogy. Next is one of the funniest series I've had the pleasure of reading. I think we could all benefit from some laughs right now. Terry Pratchett's Discworld books are not your average fantasy by any means. This series of a staggering 41 books takes place on a flat world that voyages through space on the back of four enormous elephants, which are balanced on the shell of a giant turtle. If that alone doesn't pique your interest, let me just say that Pratchett is a master of brilliant, ridiculous fantasy comedy without making his books feel like pointless parody. There's a lot going on in these books, and Pratchett manages to turn basically every classic fantasy trope on its head. And I should mention that it's got some of the strangest characters that I've read, such as the luggage, which which is a trunk with legs that's made of sapient wood and, and is as faithful as any dog. Inside the trunk, it contains many dimensions and always has a fresh pair of lavender-scented underwear for you. Anyway, if you want to read a rich world with amazing characters that's guaranteed to make you laugh, I'd recommend delving into Discworld, but keep in mind that you don't need to start at the beginning. 
This series is made up of multiple mini-series and you can start with any of them. Actually, most people would recommend that you don't start at the beginning because the first book doesn't accurately portray Pratchett's writing skill that well or the tone of the series. I mentioned in my 7 cozy fantasy books to read video that I started with Mort and since then I have read several of them but I would say that this was the perfect introduction to Discworld in my opinion so I would recommend starting with Mort or with whichever miniseries catches your interest. The Bone comics by Jeff Smith were some of my favorites growing up. Not only are they filled with comedy, but they're also surprisingly epic. I don't have a lot to say about them, but they have dragons and they have rat creatures. What's not to love? It doesn't matter what age you are, I would recommend them for all ages. Also, there's a Netflix adaptation that's in the works, so now is a good time to read them. I am always looking for a good friendship dynamic in my books. Whether it's Frodo and Sam, or Rand, Matt, and Perrin, I'm always down for a good bromance in my books. And The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch introduces us to a very enjoyable friendship. This book is set in the Italian-inspired island city of Camor, where we follow Locke and his crew of thieves, the Gentleman Bastards and the land of Camor is vivid and dark and feels like a fantasy blend of the Italian Renaissance and maybe a mix of some steampunk elements as well. There's a lot of mysteries and political conspiracies going on, but I'd say that the characters are where this book really shines. Locke himself is a very fun character to read. He's determined and clever and quick-witted, but he also has a lot of flaws, which we learn about from the get-go. And of course, his loyal friend, Jean, or Jean, I don't know how to pronounce it, but he is also another very well-developed character with a lot of backstory, and he's kind of the muscle to Locke's brain. They easily have one of the best friendships that I've read. If you're looking for a gritty series with some great dialogue and a good friendship dynamic, then you should definitely give this one a read. Now I have to recommend one of the best newer releases that I have read in a long time, Senlin Ascends by Josiah Bancroft. The story follows Thomas Senlin, who has planned a seemingly perfect honeymoon with his new bride to visit the renowned Tower of Babel. When he arrives and gets separated from his wife, he has to enter the tower alone in search of her, and he quickly discovers that this is not exactly the same tower that he thought it would be. Each level of the tower is a different ringdom, a city with different politics and hierarchies, and Senlin has to adapt to all of these if he's going to find his wife. This is another case where the protagonist has nothing going right for them. After Senlin is separated from his wife, pretty much everything goes downhill from there, whether he's being manipulated or flat out robbed by the people of the tower. There's a lot of character progression that I was pretty impressed with, also the writing style is so beautiful that at times it feels like I'm reading a classic. So yeah, if you want to escape to a deceiving tower of different ringdoms, then I would recommend Senlin Ascends. When thinking of a fantasy series that I'd like to escape to, The Earthsea Cycle by Ursula K. Le Guin definitely comes to mind. The world of Earthsea is made up of a cluster of islands surrounded by mostly uncharted ocean. I'm sure by now that you've heard of these books, but the journey of Sparrowhawk, or Ged if you want to use his true name, sailing endlessly across the sea from island to island is a fantasy masterpiece that you're not going to want to miss out on. Much like the name of the wind, the Earth Sea Cycle puts an emphasis on the importance of words and knowing the name of things, which also shows itself in the beautiful poetry of its writing. I would say that these books are a great example of the quality that young adult books should strive for. It has been a while since I read them, but I do remember finding the second book to be a lot better than the first, but I do plan on picking these books up again soon. So those are 10 fantasy books to escape to, 
while in self-isolation. Now, I also asked you guys over on Twitter which fantasy books that you've been reading in isolation, and if there's any that you would like to add, then make sure to let me know it down in the comments. Myself, and I'm sure many others, are always happy to get some recommendations. And if you'd like to support the channel and get your name added to the magical scroll, then make sure to check out my Patreon. A big shout out to my most recent high tier patron, Nicholas Fapa. You're awesome, and the support helps out so much with making these videos. Thank you.